Welcome to our run-through of NIC Software's Sharpener Pro 3, an absolutely outstanding program for sharpening. Uh, I have it installed as a plug-in. It comes as a standalone also. So I'll open the image and select Filter, NIC Software, Sharpener Pro. Now if you go for raw, sharp, uh, raw pre-sharpener, that means you have taken the image, number one, with no extra sharpening setting on your camera. Uh, number two, when you open it in RAW, make sure that all the sharpening settings are down to zero. And number three, you have to shoot in RAW. Okay, output sharpener we're going to do. And here we go, pop right into Sharpener Pro 3. It's our image. We get all your usual viewing. Now this is nice for this viewing. Uh, split screen, you get this nice line here and you can you know, scroll through your before and after. Very, very nice. And you get the top to bottom before and after. Let's go to full screen. Come right on over to our adjustments here. Output sharpening is where we'll start. This is a global adjustment. And you can choose uh, anything from display, like a computer monitor, a monitor of any kind, to an inkjet printer. And the bottom three are real specialized uh, printing processes. Let's choose inkjet. I'm just going to assume that you're going to print this out on a, on a nice printer. You get three selections, viewing distance, I just leave this at auto. Uh, I'll, I've got uh, six different paper types here. I'm going to choose luster. And I'm going to set my printer resolution. You've got to figure out what that is on your printer, 24 by 24. Okay, creative sharpening. Now we start the sharpening process. Output sharpening strength, pretty straightforward. How strongly do you want the edges to be, uh, you know, spread apart in terms of contrast? Structure is really interesting. That's about um, the texture and the fine detail between the edges, which is uh, totally different from anything you'd find in the Photoshop on Sharp Mask. Local contrast is about edges. So if you want to uh, bring out texture between the edges, structure is where you want to go and local contrast for your edges. Focus is interesting. If you drag this down to the left, you'll see the image uh, takes on much more focused and much more out of focus when it comes up to the right. Now this is kind of the program's idea of trying to figure out what it looks like it's out of focus and to bring it in focus. I found this to be of great use more on the control points that we're going to see coming up right now. Uh, Let's do this one first, control points. These things are absolutely fantastic. Click on the button here, come into your image, click again to drop the point. Now it looks like I only have one adjustment, how strong to sharpen or not. Click on the triangle to get all your options. Click on this guy to set the diameter of the area affected. And this is really crucial. Move the point around, come to the little gray guy, move that around. Now, okay, it looks like the area is that big, but you've got to be real careful here. You need to come over into the panel, click on uh, the mass icon to get a good idea. I want to make sure that this thing is not impinging upon uh, any part of the leaf of the butterfly. So I'll go, I can go ahead and do that. That looks pretty good. Well, no, down a bit. Okay, click on the mass icon again to make that all go away. Now I kind of like the spread of that effect as well as uh, the effect uh, itself once I drag all these guys down. Because this is the part where I really don't want any kind of sharpening or any kind of focus effect to come in. So that I'm going to like. So now all I have to do, you can come over here and click the duplicate button, but you don't really have to. If a keyboard shortcut, hold down the Alt key or hold down the Option key on a Mac and you'll see the plus sign appear over that little mover guy. So with that key held down, click on that guy and duplicate it right down here. And there comes in the effect. Okay, I'll only drop uh, two of these points. I can click on the mask again and see where both of them are coming in. And again, look at this guy. He looks just way, way too big. Bring him down a little bit. I'd rather have uh, more points of a smaller diameter than the other way around. You get really finer control and it's so easy to move them around. 
Okay, now another option you have besides control points is also color ranges. If you want to select a particular color to be sharpened, you can. And you can do it in a couple of different ways. You can click on the color swatch uh, and get your color picker, set any color you want. Um, I don't know what that might be. The whites and the blacks, I guess, are the wings, what I'm looking at. And the other way to do it is click on the eyedropper tool, come into the image, click on a color that you want to sharpen, and now you have your degree of sharpening for each one of those that you want to do. And you can add as many colors as you want by simply clicking the plus key, and you can, any you decide you don't want, just click the minus key. It is really a fantastic program. Uh, yeah, the very last thing I'm going to do is go over this loop view at the bottom where you can get the 100% view, which is really, really valuable, uh, especially if you're working with images that are quite large and uh, you have to shrink them way down to see all of the image on the preview window. Uh, so this always gives you, in the loop view, the 100%. Now, you can see as I move my cursor around in my image, the loop view moves. If I want to fix it, say if I want to fix it right there, just simply come back press the push pin icon, come back to where you want to be, your icon will turn to a push pin and click there, and then it freezes. Now you can go back and make any adjustments you want, and you can see it real time before and after. Really, really fantastic program. And there's even more. Click on the brush button, and you come immediately back into Photoshop. And the Nick Tool thingy here, painting thingy, comes up. You can see it automatically creates a new layer with a layer mask that is active, filled with black, which means what you see is your original image. And now, if you want to, get a paintbrush, paint with white, and then you can paint the effect, the Sharpener Pro 3 effect, back in. Uh, usually, I go the other way around because I like the effect that I've gotten with all the control points giving me fantastic uh, power over exactly what I want sharpened or blurred. And I'll click Fill. Now this fills the uh, layer mask as you see with white, which means I see the effect. Now if I want to, I can paint the effect out onto the original pixels. Uh, the same is kind of true with uh, Erase. You click on that, you still get the white and you paint the effect out clear to get rid of everything. So uh, click Apply if you really love it. Click Discard if you don't. And otherwise, uh, that's about it. What a, I, I can't say enough about this program. It gives you fantastic control. You can take it just about pretty much as deep as you want. If you want a quick and dirty sharpening, just go with the, go with the preset, download some presets, plug them in, and you're good to go. And, but then if you want to go deeper and deeper and deeper, you've got that also highest recommendation for this program. Really, really well worth it. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.